Madam President, I rise today to express my growing concern as massive tax increases loom on the horizon. And yet the Senate has not taken a single vote to forestall what many are appropriately calling tax Mageddon. Washington tends to be a place where people speak in hyperbole, but it's hard to overstate the magnitude of the tax increases that will hit our economy starting next year if we do not act. If Congress doesn't vote to extend the current income tax rates, the lower tax rates on investment income, relief from the alternative minimum tax, relief from the federal estate tax, and other expiring tax relief measures, the result will be a tax increase of more than $470 billion on Americans in 2013 alone. Over the next 10 years, this tax increase would result in nearly $4.5 trillion in new taxes on American families and entrepreneurs. This will be the largest tax increase in our nation's history in absolute dollars and the second largest tax increase since World War II as a percentage of our economy. And this massive tax increase does not even take into account the new taxes enacted as part of Obamacare that will also go into effect in 2013 and that will pose, impose an additional $23 billion in higher taxes on individuals and businesses. What will these taxes mean, Madam President, to the average American family? Well, the Heritage Foundation recently published a study that estimated the tax increase per, the tax, I should say, the increase per tax return in every state. In my state of South Dakota, Heritage estimates that the average tax increase per tax return will be $3,187 in 2013. Now, I would say this to my Democratic friends who generally believe in demand-driven Keynesian economics. The average family in South Dakota can do more to stimulate our economy and create new employment by keeping their $3,187 and spending it as they see fit, not as Washington sees fit to spend it on their behalf. Tax Mageddon is an apt description when you consider the impact of these tax increases, not just on individual families, but on our entire economy. Until recently, we could speculate about the impact of these tax increases on our fragile economy, but the magnitude of the damage was not in dispute. Not anymore. Last month, the Congressional Budget Office gave us the most definitive estimate yet of the impact of the nearly one-half trillion dollars of tax increases in 2013 when combined with the more than $100 billion of spending cuts from the sequester. The Congressional Budget Office projects that the combination of massive tax increases and the sequester will result in real GDP growth in calendar year 2013 of only one half of one percent. The picture is even bleaker when you consider that the Congressional Budget Office also projects that the economy will actually contract by 1.3 percent in the first half of 2013. According to the CBO, such a contraction in output in the first half of 2013 would, and I quote, probably be judged to be a recession, end quote. So let's be clear about what tax Mageddon means. We are not talking about a slight slowdown in growth of a few tenths of a percent. What we are facing is the difference between positive growth on one hand, which will mean more jobs and higher incomes, and a recession on the other hand. How big is the difference in economic growth next year if we act to forestall the pending tax increases versus not doing anything about it? According to the Congressional Budget Office, if Congress acted to remove the tax increases and budget cuts, the growth of real GDP in 2013 would be in the range of 4.4 percent. This sort of robust growth is a far cry from the lackluster economic performance that we've experienced of late. In fact, GDP growth for the first quarter of this year was recently revised downward to just 1.9 percent. This is hardly the magnitude of economic growth necessary to sustain a meaningful recovery that will finally bring the unemployment rate below 8 percent, something the current meager recovery has failed to accomplish. Madam President, we can and must do better. And we can start by providing Americans some certainty as to what their taxes are going to be come next year. Fortunately, we learned recently that the House of Representatives intends to hold a vote on legislation to extend the existing tax rates next month. According to statements by House Speaker Boehner and Majority Leader Cantor, the House is likely to consider a short-term, perhaps for one year, 
extension of existing tax rates as a bridge to fundamental tax reform next year. Now, some may question why we need to vote on an extension of the tax rates now because they assume that these tax issues can simply be dealt with as a part of the post-election lame duck session. Well, the answer is that we need a vote now because the delay in extending current tax policy is having a very real impact on our economy today. In fact, the Congressional Budget Office, again, estimates that the mere possibility of pending tax increases and spending cuts will lower U.S. GDP by one half of one percent in the second half of this year. Not next year, Madam President, this year. The reason for this is simple. Americans, whether they be investors, small business owners, or simply consumers, understand that they may have a larger tax bill come next year, meaning they will have less after-tax income. Faced with that possibility, we shouldn't be surprised if Americans are choosing to consume less or put off business investments until they know what their tax situation is going to be. Just this week, there was a Bloomberg article entitled, Fiscal Cliff Concerns Hurting Economy as Companies Hold Back. The article quoted a senior economist at Bank of America who said, and I quote, you don't board up the windows when the hurricane is there, you board up the windows in anticipation, end quote. This economist predicted the U.S. growth decelerating to 1.3 percent in the third quarter of this year and 1 percent in the fourth quarter. The moral of the story, Madam President, is clear. The sooner we act to extend the current tax rates, the better off our economy will be and the better off will be the 12.7 million Americans who are currently unemployed. The sooner we act, the better off will be the 5.4 million Americans who've been unemployed long term, or the 46.2 million Americans living in poverty, or the record 46 million Americans who receive food stamps. I agreed with President Obama when he said in August of 2009, and I quote, you don't raise taxes in a recession, end quote, President Obama from August of 2009. Well, you, if you shouldn't raise taxes in a recession, it stands to reason that you also shouldn't raise taxes that will cause a recession. I also agree with a number of my Democratic colleagues that were quoted earlier this week in an article about these pending tax increases. I agree with Senator Jim Webb, who was quoted as saying, and I quote again, we shouldn't raise taxes on ordinary income, end quote. I agree with Senator Ben Nelson, who was quoted as saying, my druthers is to extend the tax cuts for everybody, end quote. And I agree with former Senator Pete Domenici, and former OMB Director Alice Rivlin, who appeared before the Finance Committee earlier this week, and who both agreed that we need a short-term extension of current tax law in order to get us to a place where we can consider fundamental reforms to our tax code and our entitlement programs. Madam President, even former Bi President Bill Clinton, a major surrogate for the Obama campaign, admitted the obvious when he said recently that a short-term extension of the tax cuts might be necessary. Former President Clinton and other Democratic members that I mentioned have not suddenly become supply-side tax cutters. But they realize that it is simply common sense that with the economy slowing, the last thing that Congress should do is slam on the brakes by allowing massive tax increases. We were reminded earlier this week just how destructive the proposed income tax rate increases would be on the sector of our economy responsible for the bulk of new job creation, and that's our small businesses. According to an analysis by the nonpartisan Joint Committee on Taxation released on June 18th, the tax increases that President Obama has proposed would hit more than half, more than half, 53 percent to be precise, of all flow through business income. The Joint Tax Committee estimates that 940,000 business owners would find themselves subject to higher tax rates next year. Does anyone think? that with unemployment above 8 percent for 41 straight months, that higher taxes on nearly a million business owners is the right policy. That that is exactly where we are headed if we don't act. Of course, extending current tax law temporarily is only a short-term fix. What is really needed is comprehensive tax reform, much like the Tax Reform Act of 1986. Real tax reform will drive economic growth higher, will lead to robust job creation, and will result in more revenue to the federal government. 
But real tax reform will require presidential leadership, something that has been unfortunately lacking over the past three and a half years. Perhaps next year, we will have a president truly willing to commit to tax reform. A president who's not content with simply releasing a 23-page framework for corporate tax reform. But until we get to comprehensive tax reform, the least we can do now is to ensure that Americans do not face a massive new tax hike. So in conclusion, Madam President, we're facing a moment of truth. We can choose to put our heads in the sand and pretend like tax Mageddon isn't real. We can choose to accept slower economic growth for the remainder of this year and a recession in the first half of next year. Or we can choose to take action in a way that says loud and clear to all Americans that now is not the time for a massive new tax increase. I'm hopeful that we will see a bill from the House of Representatives in the coming weeks to extend the tax rates in order to avert tax Mageddon. If the Senate majority is serious in their rhetoric of getting our economy back on track, they will allow a straight up and down vote on this measure. Fundamental tax reform may need to wait until next, the next Congress, but we can and we should act immediately to forestall the looming tax increases that we know will throw this economy back into a recession. It's not a Republican or a Democrat thing to do, Madam President. It is simply common sense. And I'm hopeful that the Democrat majority will allow for a debate and vote on an extension of the current tax rates sooner rather than later. Every day that we wait is another day that our economy suffers unnecessarily. Madam President, I don't have to tell anybody here, if you look at all the economic data that comes in month after month after month, you've got the weakest economic recovery in 60 years. We've got 23 million unemployed or underemployed Americans. We have, as I said, 41 consecutive months now of unemployment over 8 percent. And we've got anemic, sluggish growth projections next year by the Congressional Budget Office if, in fact, we don't take the steps that are necessary to avert tax Mageddon. So, Madam President, I hope that uh, the House of Representatives will vote. I hope the United States Senate will follow suit. And then I hope the President of the United States will join us in recognizing that we can't afford to allow taxes to go up. The largest tax increase in American history on January 1 of next year. And we can't wait until a lame duck session to address, to address it because every single day that we do, Americans, investors, small businesses are putting off decisions about hiring, about putting their capital to work and growing this economy. Madam President, I yield the floor.